Hi, uh, my name is Francisco and this is Salima. And so we, both of us are from iTrust in Singapore. So this is our agenda for today. Uh, first is who we are in iTrust. So then we'll go through cyber physical attacks and defense. Then the A6 tool, which we developed. We'll do a video demo of this A6 tool. And finally, our findings and conclusions. So who are we uh, as iTrust? So iTrust is a center for research in cybersecurity, and we are part of the university, uh, Singapore University of Technology and Design. And we are mainly funded by the Singapore National Research Foundation. And so we have many university collaborators, uh, for example, BGU in Israel and the Imperial College in London. So we have three main research focus areas. So first in, is in the cyber physical systems, enterprise security, and the Internet of Things. And we have five distinctive values. Uh, first is the applied research to make sure that all the research that we do um, is relevant in our daily lives. And so to do that, we have test bits, which I'll go through later. Then we have multidisciplinary researchers. So all our researchers are not necessarily uh, cybersecurity trained, but they help us in uh, these various projects. So we also allow undergraduate and PhD students to come and collaborate with us also. And finally, we have industry collaborators on our projects. So we have four test bits. And the first is IoT test bit. This is a shielded room that prevents wireless signals from interrupting uh, any experiments that we are conducting. Then we have a secure water treatment test bit, or SWOT. Uh, this is, uh, it, it changes uh, raw water and processes it so that it can be drinkable. And this is powered by Allen Bradley PLCs. Next is the water distribution plant, or WADI. Um, this plant is uh, it, based on the demand of the homes. It provides a supply of water to these different tanks. And this is powered by National Instruments PLCs. And lastly is our electric power and intelligent control plant, or EPIC. This is a, basically a smart grid whereby you have a demand of the smart homes and the smart grid will supply the whatever power that is necessary. And so with these four test bits, we are allowed to experiment on these things and to apply our research in those areas. And so last month, we had an event called Critical Infrastructure Security Showdown. And this was an event where we invited red teams from Korea, from Italy, where they attack our secure water treatment plant. And based on these attacks, we also invited some blue teams uh, to see how they fare against these attacks. And so one of the teams that came was Kaspersky, where we met Anton and his team. And so we hope for this event to be uh, annually. And so this is our third installment, and hopefully we have one next year. And so now I'll pass to Salima to go run through with you some uh, cyber physical attacks and defense mechanisms. As we all know, cyber physical attacks are different from cyber attacks as cyber physical attacks affects the physical process itself. So this is a list of few cyber physical attacks that has happened throughout the past. We all know about Stuxnet and the Ukraine power grid. This list is, I feel, is growing and there's a real need to address this threat. So attacks in cyber physical system or in ICS, industrial control system, can be as categorized as follows. A test could be either in static form or in dynamic form, in single point or in multi point, and can further categorize as single stage and multi stage. So, towards the end of the presentation, we'll do uh, two video demos where we will explain to you how these attack categories come into place. There are a few cyber physical defense mechanisms, and one of them is ADMs, known as anomaly detection mechanisms. ADMs, there are two types. They are design-based approaches and machine learning-based approaches. For design-based approaches, it takes the physics of the process to create a model, whereas for machine learning, it takes the data set to create a model. So let's say in a, in a scenario of a water plant, an example of design-based approach would be um, it takes the, the change in water level should correspond to the water tank into and to the water into and out of the tank, whereas for machine learning, if there's, it should follow a pattern, and if the sensor and the actuators deviate from this pattern, it will give rise to an anomaly. So, an example of ADM is 
DAD, known as Distributor Attack Detection. DAD has, is a design-based approach. It has been heavily researched on in iTrust and developed. It uses invariants, which are obtained from plant design. So invariants are state constraint, constraints that the process must adhere to and it cannot be compromised. So from the table, there are a few attacks launched and we tested out how that fair against them. Out of 56 attacks, 45 were detected, which is about 80%. So Francisco can share with us why was, is there a need for an attack tool? So as discussed earlier, there are difference between there are a wide variety of attacks that could happen. For example, a simple attack could be a static, single stage, single point. And this attack should be uh, easily detected. Whereas a more complex attack, for example, a dynamic, multi-stage, multi-point attack, could be a lot more difficult to detect. And so we are on the, with the rise of cyber-physical attacks, a lot more ADMs are being developed. And so we need to evaluate whether these ADMs are complete and they're robust so that uh, with the wide variety of attacks, we're able to test them. And so we, we developed this A6 tool, and this A6 tool is uh, developed on a secure water treatment plant. Yeah, so I'll pass to Salima to go through briefly of what the SWOT architecture is like. So SWOT, also known as secure water treatment, which is one of our test bait in iTrust. So this is a network architecture. There are three levels to it. The first level, level three, with the operation management, which consists of the SCADA workstation and the historian server, followed by level two, which is the supervisory control, which consists of the engineering workstation. At level one, we have the plant control network. So in SWAP, we have six stages. So there are six primary PLCs which communicates within each other. And in level zero, which is the process layer, it consists of the RIO, or the remote input module, where it sends and receives signals from actuators and sensors. This is the overview of SWAP process. So SWAP is a miniature scale of an actual water treatment plant. So we have six stages, as mentioned earlier on. The first stage is raw water, followed by pre-treatment. At the third stage, we have the ultrafiltration. Fourth, we have the dechlorination process. Fifth, we have reverse, reverse osmosis. And finally, we have the RO product. So now that you know more about, the, briefly know about the SWOT architecture and the process, Francisco will tell you about the attack tool itself. So we have two attack tools. One is at L1 and L0. So the L1 is basically a device that is at level one. And so the device sits between the two PLCs that are talking and sharing information with each other. So it's basically a man in the middle. And what this device can do is to mutate the packets flowing between these two PLCs. Next is the level zero A6 tool. And this tool sits between the PLC and the RIO. And so this device is able to mutate the commands that are being sent from the PLC to the actuators and also the st status updates to the PLC. And so both of these tools are designed the same way. So first we need to bridge the two network devices, two network interfaces, so that there is a true man in the middle and all packets are going through this device. Then we design attacks based on the mutation operators and the command validators, which I'll go through later. And once we have designed all the attacks, then we can launch them. So these mutation operators was designed to help us break down large-scale attacks and is able to help us categorize them into various ways. So these are the add operators, whereby I'm able to add or subtract a value based on the state measurements. So for example, if the LIT 101 value is currently at 300, I'm able to add 500 to it. So add limits delta allows me to add between the threshold. So for example, if my sensor values fluctuate between a plus one, minus one, I'm able to add or subtract those values as well. And the add random delta allows me to add a random value and it could simulate a fuzzing attack on uh, the packet. These are the set operators. The set operators, uh, the first two, set to zero and set to one, are designed because there are actuators that have binary status, so it could be either on or off. And so you can easily just set these values regardless of the current status of the actuator. Then we have the set to static and set to random. 
This allows me to set the actual values irregardless of the current state of the program. So for example, if my LIT 101 is currently at 300, I can just change it to 756 at any time. And set to random also allows me to do the same thing, but with random values. Next are the bit shift operators. These bit shift operators are designed because naturally all network packets are translated into hexadecimals. And so if an attacker does not understand how the packets are being created and just switches the bits, it will create a different uh, packet combination. And so these bit shift operators allow me to simulate those kind of attacks. And so an example would be if I shift the bits by four, I'm able to create a value from 300 to 5,900. Next are the command validators. So every actuator has a set of valid and invalid commands. So for example, a pump can either be on or off, one or zero, and those are within its valid uh, commands. But if I send a minus five or a plus 10, these are considered invalid commands. And so I'm able to generate these attacks based on this set of operators and validators. So now, uh, we'll go through a level one attack demo. This is the A6L1. And so to understand what is happening, we will go through with you the control strategy of the plant. And so at PLC1, stage one, the strategy is that if I receive uh, LIT301 from stage three to me, and if the value is less than 800, I will turn on the pump to refill it. But if the pump, if the LIT301, the water level, is above 1,000, I will stop the pump to, so that it will not overflow. And so what I will do is I will do a static, single point, multi-stage attack, whereby I will mutate the packet going from PLC3 to PLC1 that changes the value of the water level. So on the left-hand side, you can see that the pump is off because LIT301 is above 800. And on the right, you'll see the actual values inside the PLC. And both PLC3 and PLC1 have had the exact same value. And so what I will do is I will add a mutation operator, add static delta, and minus 300. And immediately, you can see that PLC1 has 300 less than PLC3. But PAM101 still turns on because PLC1 thinks that PLC3 has less water. And this attack was not detected by the detection the DAD uh, ADM has described earlier. So now I'll pass to Salima to show you the level zero attack. So for level zero attack, we'll be doing a single, a static single stage multi attack. I'll be doing an attack on stage one at multiple points on both the valve and the pump. So for the strategy of this attack is that the pump Will turn should be off and the valve should be open when the water level is set low. However, for this attack, what I'll be doing is I will turn off the pump and open the valve regardless of the water level. An interesting attack on level zero is that not only can you change the physical process, you can also change the status to being sent to the signal. So you can see that the valve is being closed and the pump is being on, and hence the water level is slowly decreasing. What this attack does is you will turn off the pump physically and open the valve. However, to the PLCs, what it sends is, what is opposite, you will send that the PLC is being turned, the pump is being turned on and the valve is being closed. So when the attack is launched, you can see that the water level will be slowly increasing instead of decreasing. So now that the attack is launched, the water level is at 740 is slowly increasing. However, in this workstation, what you see is that the pump is being turned on and the valve is closed. But in physically, what is happening is the opposite. Another way to make this attack stealthy is that you can also mutate the LIT values itself. So based on doing numerous experiments and uh, detecting against different anomaly detection mechanisms, we found out a few findings. So one of them is, uh, there are a few ICS components that take in out of range values and commands. So, as mentioned, the pump usually is only off or on, which is zero or one for the value. However, if I send a negative value such as, neg such as minus five, 
what it does is it actually turns on the pump, which shouldn't be the case. Secondly, there's a need to have correlated invariants across biosis. This is more specific to DAD, which we mentioned earlier on. So as according to the level one demo, the PL, at stage one, the PLC takes in value, which is also in stage three. So with correlated invariants, these attacks could be detected. There are also a few false positives that we found, both in design-based approaches and in machine learning-based approaches. For design-based approaches, it's mainly due to the change in threshold. So as the plant runs over time, the threshold changes, hence it gives rise to false positive. And for machine learning approach, for machine, for machine learning based, one of the reasons for false positive is that the machine learning should be able to take consideration of the whole plant process. So if a pump only turns on rarely, like say like once in every two months, the algorithm should be able to pick it up. So for current work, we intend to do automation, automated generation of attacks. We are also uh, at midst of creating an attached benchmark that can be used in ICS plants. With that, we intend to create a test suit for ADMs to be tested against them. We like to say our special thanks to Sridhar for his work in DADs, Gayatri for her work in mutation operators, Professor Neil and his team, uh, they initially did level zero attacks for me in the middle and Professor Aditya for overseeing this whole project. So if you have any question, you can feel free to ask us after the presentation. Thank you. Thank you.